Good morning, everyone. I might not do this after the sermon, so I'm going to take two minutes right now. And I want to thank Pastor Jeff Spoonie Badger and Brent Allen for their friendship, for their love, for what they've offered me to do. To walk with them in the ministry is the greatest honor for me. So thank you both of you uh, for allowing me. Thank you for the preaching opportunities that Jeff gave me. Thank you for your love and your freedom that you gave to work among youth. Last but not the least, thank you, Kevin, for giving me chances to sing some new songs, special songs, on and off. Can you hear me? Yeah. That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> From Anna Faith to Joe Gilstrap, every one of you have blessed me. In some fashion or form, you have changed my ministry. I thank God and praise God for what God has done in my life through each one of your life. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Abba, Father in heaven, the moments that we live in, the time that we have, is to glorify your name. Lord, let these 25 minutes of time that I have may be pleasing in your sight. Let not our emotions would take away the time with you. Help us to leave everything aside this moment and concentrate to listen to your still, small voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the early, the first half of 19th century, Wendell Holmes was a Supreme Court Justice of America who was known for his absent-mindedness. One day, he traveled from Washington, D.C. in a train, reading a pending case. While he was reading his pending case, the ticket collector came into his coach and asked him, Sir, can I see your ticket? The judge, while he was reading his pending case, kept his file aside, started looking for his ticket in his pockets, didn't find it, looking for the ticket in his jacket, didn't find it, looking for the ticket in the jacket and the bag that he has. Every second, there's tension and embarrassment mounting. But the ticket collector said to the judge, Sir, I know you, so don't worry. When you go back home, send me the ticket. That's fine. And the judge said, good man, it's not whether I can pay the fare or not. It's not that whether I can send the ticket back or not. The problem is, where am I going? <laughs> I'm glad someone of you laughed for my jokes. <laughs> Most of us, as Christians, we are in this journey. We don't know where we are going. My friends, this morning, what God has placed on my heart, very brief, give me your undivided attention. There is one thing that is the only thing, which is everything. I'm going to preach about one thing that Mary has done that pleased God. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 10. And if you have a bookmark, please keep your bookmark in John chapter 11. We're going to look at three different chapters, few verses, three points, and we are done. Okay? Give me your undivided attention. Luke chapter 10. Thirty-eight to the following. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him, saying, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. 
And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which was not to be taken away from her. May the Lord add his blessings to the red scripture portion. If you and I were to live this scene today as wife and husband, if you have invited guests today into your homes, if there are a dozen and more people in your own home have eaten a nice meal and your wife or your husband is spending time with the guests and you have to work by yourself at sink cleaning pots, how frustrated you would be. I've been homes. I've been invited into a lot of homes for dinners, lunches. If one person is spending time with me, having fun, and the other person is working in the kitchen, after five minutes, wife sends a signal to husband. She throws a plate. <laughs> she makes sure the husband knows that she's working by herself in the kitchen. She wants him back. Is it not fair enough on Martha's part if not many, 12 disciples, Jesus, 13 people, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, 16 people. Minimum of 16 people were in the room that day. We, they don't have the facilities like we do. Dishwashers, dish soap, running water in the sink 24 hours, no. Cooking and cleaning was tough in those days. Martha was frustrated. She was distracted with her work. The Bible says she was distracted with much work. How is it fair on Mary's part to sit at the feet of Jesus if Martha is working by herself? How is it fair enough for us if 30 of our youth leaders go to Tara's house to eat crawfish after the church? How is it fair enough for him to work everything and he is not frustrated about it? What is the best thing, sitting at the feet of Jesus or not? My friends, may I tell you, in the busyness of our ministry, we have missed the very ministry. We are so busy that we missed Jesus on our way. We are working and working and working for Jesus, but we missed Jesus himself. He said, when you woke up in the morning, he was actually wanting to talk to you. And he said, Jesus, wait. I have to talk to my friend about you, so you wait here. So we go talk. Jesus, wait. I have a church to maintain, so we move on. We move on for youth. We move on for a lot of things in life. What have we missed? We missed spending time with Jesus himself. In the busyness of our ministry, we miss the ministry itself. How tragedy is that? Secondly, we see Mary. When was the last time you were hungry? When was the last time you were thirsty for hours and days? Mary was burning with questions for life. When will I ever conquer this sin? When will I ever overcome these temptations in my life? What is life after death? What is the meaning and purpose of life? Mary had some beautiful questions in her life, never answered. When Jesus came into her home that day, when Jesus was speaking, she could not help but stand still and sit at the feet of Jesus because Jesus was speaking the words of life. My friends, when you are such hunger, with such thirst in your life, you could not help but sit at the feet of Jesus. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus and listened. The living waters were flowing through the mouth of Jesus. My pastor back home, Pastor David, said this once. What God does in us is far more important than what God does through us. What God does in us is far more important than what God does through us. If God can use a donkey to do his work, why are we here? What we work for the Lord is not that important. The will of God is more important than the work of God. What is the will of God for your life and for my life? 
the will of God for me and for you is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Do you love God enough? Have you sat at the feet of Jesus and to gaze at his beauty? When was the last time that you sat and sat and sat and fell in love with God when you read the word of God? The picture of Jesus was painted in the scriptures. What kind of picture did you see this morning? Was he gracious? Brent saw, your grace is enough for me this morning. What kind of pictures did you see this morning when you opened the scriptures? How long did you spend time with God this morning? My friends, you might be busy doing a lot of things. I am not saying painting church is bad. I am not saying doing flooring in the church is bad. I am not saying building a cafeteria in church is bad. But I am saying if that work is not an overflow of worship, it is all in vain. Your work should be an overflow of worship. We might be thinking, if Mary sits at the feet of Jesus, if all of us here today sit at the feet of Jesus, who will work? Isn't that a legitimate question, my friends? If every one of us sit at the feet of Jesus, who's going to work? How many of you raise your hands for that? Isn't it true? Isn't it true if everyone sits at the feet of Jesus, who's going to work for the kingdom of God? My friends, this is my aha moment when I was reading through the scripture. Let's look. Luke chapter 10, verses 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him. My friends, Martha opened her home because probably Martha might be the eldest one and the home is recognized after her. Martha's home. Let's look John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Have you catch that? Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, home of Martha. But the town, the whole village is recognized after Mary. So her works surpassed the works of Martha. The whole village is recognized by Mary. Such is the work of Mary. Secondly, you see, when Mary, when Lazarus was dead and Jesus was in, in Bethany waiting for Ma Mary, Mary rushed from her home to see Jesus. Look who's followed Mary. People followed Mary when she went to meet Jesus. They thought she was going to Lazarus' tomb to cry. But what happened to Martha? Martha did the same thing in verse 20. But no one followed Martha. Martha went by herself. But Mary, when she went from the home, people followed Mary. Her works surpassed the works of Martha. Her works came out of the abundance of worship. Devotion is better than distraction. My friends, Martha was distracted that day. Mary was devoted at the feet of Jesus. Secondly, let's look at John chapter 11, verse 17 through 26. Now when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 12 miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. But Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have been died, would, would not have been died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is, the, who is to come into the world.
my friends intimacy is better than information martha had lot of information martha knows that he can whatever you ask of god god will give it to you martha knows what he will he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day she knows scripture martha knows scripture i believe that you are the christ the son of god verse 27 she believes she knows who he is my friends knowing and believing are two different things martha knew a lot believed nothing if there is no intimacy people speak a lot we have to speak a lot to explain to ourselves as tony evans says we believe far too often we believe in a god in whom we don't trust we believe in a god in whom we don't trust mary knows a lot about jesus but she did not believe jesus says in verse 26 do you believe this and verse 28 says she went her way quote a lot of scriptures most of us seated here our relationships are like that with christ when we ask god for something and if he, if he doesn't give up it might be job it might be something else we just say it's all in god's timing god knows when he needs it my friends though it sounds so spiritual did you believe god for that jargons here they've been called by the landlords to vacate the place they have they didn't have much time they were looking for an apartment they saw this beautiful house that they desired to have they prayed in faith and they will move next month if i'm not wrong is that right faith for the moment do you believe his words if it comes it comes it we don't if it doesn't come it's all in god's timing how is your intimacy with christ that you know when to ask when to wait our behavior will tell our belief when martha left home no one followed martha martha quoted scripture after scripture after scripture resurrection you are christ when you ask god will give it to you she knows everything she didn't believe nothing intimacy has three different components my friends i'm going to share it with you today intimacy the first thing that you are intimate reveals that we speak less words if a husband has to explain himself to his wife for an hour i don't think that's intimacy all you have to speak is 10 words because wife knows your heart if you're still struggling to explain yourself to your spouse think about it where are you intimacy secondly intimacy is shown in quickness the moment she knew jesus called her she rushed to see jesus she did not have track pants and nike shoes in those days <laughs> she had a long robe a woman running is it's not good sight to see in those days but when she knew that jesus was there she could not help but run and people followed her the quickness will tell the intimacy i've been in ministry for 10 years with my pastors back home reverend dr g samuel is our senior pastor he is almost 50 years pastoring this same church we went to funerals a lot of funerals together when he goes to a funeral when he goes to a man to a family's house when the family knows that reverend g is there they run 50 years of pastoring the same church they run fall on his shoulders weep weep and weep intimacy your quickness will tell your intimacy your less words will talk about your intimacy finally your oneness talks about your intimacy when martha came jesus spoke but when mary came he wept with her 
Mary fell at the feet of Jesus and wept. And when she wept, Jesus wept. Verse 35 says, Jesus wept. Oneness in the spirit. Intimacy produces oneness in the spirit. You don't have to talk to God an hour. God knows your heart. Don't explain your project to God like that. God knows your heart. Less words. Quickness. And oneness. Finally. Worship is better than welcoming. Martha welcomed Jesus into her home, but Mary welcomed Jesus into her heart. My friends, most of us who are seated here wanted a ticket to go to heaven. So we said, Jesus, come on board. I want to go to heaven. You have opened your home, not your hearts. Oh, how does heart look like? Okay, your heart is where the treasure is. Where is your treasure in your house? Bedroom, living room. You don't allow Jesus to your bedrooms and dining rooms. You have kept Jesus in the guest room. He's still waiting there. You have not yet opened your heart's door. How does worship look like? As Abe Kurvila puts it, my friends, the worship, she broke the jar at the feet of Jesus. She wiped his feet with her hair. Her worship was profuse, liberal. She gave it all. Secondly, her worship was pure. She gave the best for the Lord. Ask yourself, have you given everything to the Lord as a disciple? Have you given the pure things, the best things for the Lord? I am sorry to say, my dear church, I've been in churches for long enough. When you get a plasma TV in your home, look what you do with the box TV. You give it to the church. When your grandmother, your grandfather dies, look where their coats and shirts go. They come to the church. My friends, don't treat the house of the Lord like that. Give your best. Rather, you put your box TV in your home, bring plasma TV to the church. <laughs> no, right? Give the best. Especially, I'm astounded because a woman giving perfume, have you ever saw a woman sharing her makeup? Woman giving perfume is something strange. That's precious. Why? And the Bible says it's precious, it's costly. There are some things in life that are costly because they are rare in nature, like gold, diamonds, pearls, perfume. Do you know how perfume is made? How much of this bottle of whatever brand it is now, Armani, Kenneth Cole, this much bottle, hundreds and hundreds of dollars for perfume. She broke it all at the feet of Jesus and people started complaining. What have you done? You would have sold this for 300 dinari and give it to the poor. It's not Mary who answered the question, but Jesus who answered the question. Jesus said, let her alone. She is doing this for my burial. The beauty of Mary's life. She is the first woman to know the gospel. She is the first woman to know Jesus himself. She knows that Jesus is going to die. Who else? Jesus is speaking about death. Disciples, all the way along, giving alarm, I have to die. Disciples did not get it. Martha read scripture, resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. There is no resurrection without death. Martha knew about Jesus' death. She did not know. She did not figure out Martha. But Mary figured out that Jesus is going to die. This is the season of Passover. In a week, Jesus is going to die. She anointed him 
for his burial. My friends, Luke 10, 41 and 42 says, which is not be taken away from her. What is it? Love for the word of God. She sat at the feet of Jesus. What is not taken away from Mary? The desire to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen. The desperation to see Jesus. She fell at, on his feet. Finally, she worshipped God at his feet. May I say this with a burden in my heart. Don't take God granted. Don't be too casual with God. He is God and you are not. We are human beings. Be at the feet of Jesus. As much as his friend, father, everything, maintain your distance when you talk to him. Don't make fun. He is God and we are not. Look at the way she worshipped. She was at the feet of Jesus all the three times. Martha was like the church in Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. She worked hard, tired, but God says, you have lost your first love. How does first love look like? What is the definition of first love? Definition of first love, passionately pursuing the pleasure of God. Passionately pursuing the pleasures of God. Martha lost first love. Mary has that first love. In the scriptures, in the scriptures, there are men of God who've been, forgive me, uh, complimented or gave a testimony by God himself. First, Abraham, father of faith. Moses, the meekest of all. John, the beloved. When it comes to Mary, Jesus said, wherever the gospel is preached in the world, her deeds will be mentioned. Wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, her deeds will be mentioned. My friends, I'm going to close this with one last thing. At the feet of Jesus, she listened to God. When she listened to God, she know God. When she knows God, she loved God. When she loved God, she served God. And when she served God, she sacrificed for God. The more you sacrifice for God, the more you become like Christ. The words of the week. Let me read this and close this. One thing is the only thing. That is everything. Then what is that one thing? Psalm 27, 4. Words for the week. Let this sink into your hearts, mind, and soul this week. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. May the Lord add his blessings to the preaching of his word. We're going to conclude today's service. And I told you it was going to be jam-packed, right? I don't know that I've ever been to a service where we've done so many things in one short amount of time. Come on up here, brother. Let me turn your mic off just in case. Okay. So uh, the ordained men, if you'll come on up as well. We are going to ordain Sagar, and we're going to send him out. He is leaving, as I told you. Uh, he's leaving Tuesday morning to go back to Chicago where he, he studied at Moody for the last several years. And then after uh, two weeks or so in Chicago, he'll be on a plane heading back to Hyderabad, India to begin a ministry there. His ministry is to pastor to pastors. His passion and his heart is to help the pastors in India, who many of them largely have no theological education at all. He wants to help um, teach them how to study the scripture and how to teach the scripture. And so it's a brand new ministry. It's, it's uh, basically a seminary on wheels. Hey, that's a name, Seminary on Wheels. You like it? Awesome. Um, but, but in order to send him out, we, we want to ordain him. Now, ordination is a, uh, it's a spiritual thing. He can preach without this, but, but this is a, a, body of, a body of believers, a church saying, we believe God's call is on your life. We believe in what you're doing, and we believe in where you're going. And so we lay our hands on you, and we... 
we just publicly declare that God is in you and, and working through you. And, and so there's nothing mystical about this. It's really more of a, of a confirmation of what God is already doing. And so, Saga, if you'll come here. Um, man, if you'll come over here. We've, got, we, we've had an ordination council this week, and there were, there were several guys who had to go out of town. And um, so they, we, they've already done this part. Um, but we wanted to, as the pastors of the church, to uh, each, pray for you, each of us. And then uh, we're going to ask the church together to pray. So after we pray, and David, if you'll start, and I'll finish. And then I'm going to ask you, after we're done, to just, it might seem a little weird, but this is the best way to do this. Just kind of reach out your hand and just, just pray for a few moments. Um, you can pray quietly. You can pray out loud if you want. Just use your judgment on that. And uh, we're going to ordain you into the gospel ministry. Good? All right. David? And Father, as we have heard his heart this week and know that his heart is for you, we agree and we send him out as your man to preach the gospel. Lord, I ask that you would help him throughout his life to talk with you without ceasing, to listen to you with fervor, and to accomplish the things that you have planned for him. In Jesus' name. Father, I lift Saga up to you today. Um, God, I confess that I'm sometimes the Martha. <laughs> uh, and I know that this man right here is a Mary. God, he, uh, he puts his heart with you. Um, that's what he, the that's way he lives. And God, we've seen him do some incredible ministry around this campus. God, he's met people and and uh, started relationships, God, and he has introduced people to relationships with you over the last year. So, Father, this man here, I know that uh, you have him. Father, I know he's got trepidation about the future and just different things and and just looking at what's next. But, Father, guide him. uh, Use him. I know you're going to. God, he, he truly lives out what he preached today. Father, use him. Father, I encourage him today is, uh, I remember in my own ordination, I was told to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness and everything else will be given. Father, help Saga to live that out. Help him to seek you first in everything he does. Um, it's easy to say, easy to pray. It's, it's hard to live out sometimes. But Father, help him with that. Guide this man. God, I pray that we're, we're putting our hands right now on <laughs> the missionary to India that starts something that we can't even understand right now as he looks to train pastors and I pray for that use him we pray these things in your name Father as a church as your body we recognize and acknowledge the calling that you have on Saka's life what a blessing it is that we as your body, have been able to enjoy his company and his fellowship for the past year, to watch him grow spiritually, to watch him impact the world for the cause of Christ, to watch him invest in children, teenagers, adults, senior adults, people of the church, people outside the church, every single person that he met, he came into contact with, to set a godly example for the rest of the church body to follow in the ways and the means to be like Jesus Christ. So today, we not only acknowledge that, but we lay our hands on him, both physically and spiritually, and we acknowledge before the entire world that you have a calling on his life, on his heart, that the Holy Spirit is investing in his heart and in his life. And Father God, that you will use him to impact the world for the cause of Christ, that the world will come to know you more effectively, that you are continuing the work that you you started in your own disciple Thomas 2,000 years ago and is continuing today. And will continue until the time that you return. Father, that you will empower him and use him to impact every single place that he goes. That Holy Spirit goes before him. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the life and the heart and the ministry of Saga. And what he has meant to this church. But he will continue to mean to those uh, who are here. 
May he be an example for us. May we be an example for him. May we walk hand in hand with him no matter where we are in life or what is going on in our lives, that we are all part of the same body no matter where we're at, that your power will go forth, that you'll continue to use him. Father God, may the angels in heaven celebrate today because of the lives that are coming to know you because of his words and his actions. May he continue to be passionate in his pursuit of you. May he live and share in such a way that impacts those that are around him. May he demonstrate and proclaim in a way that is contagious. May his inspiration for the cause of Christ be viral so that people that just see him, that hear him, that come to contact him, him cannot help but be changed by the power of the gospel that you have placed on him. Holy Spirit, use him, we pray. Protect him, we pray. Encourage him. Set him apart as you continue to do. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we know that you have placed your hand on Saga. We know because we have watched his life, we've examined his doctrine. We've seen and we've heard faithfulness. We've experienced partnership. Father, our prayer today is that as we ordain him into the gospel ministry, that you would empower him in a spectacular way so that everywhere he goes, in his homeland, Lord, a place where there is great persecution, where men and women do lose their lives, they lose their possessions, they lose their families for the gospel. Father, may you bless him in such a way that he would be used by you to have influence over the very ones who are doing the persecuting. Father, we pray for his heart to constantly be softened. We pray for his feet to be hardened. Lord, your word tells us that there's a blessing on the feet of those who bring good news. So he goes with our blessing, but Father, even more so, he goes because you have called him. Thank you for the time that you've given us for the last year for him to be here and for us to learn from him. Thank you for his humility and thank you for his chai. You are a good God. You have brought laughter to us through his life. Joy, hope, discernment. We praise you for these things. Our church, will you stretch out your hand? Pray for Saga. You can pray out loud, you can pray silently, but everybody together will take a moment and we'll close. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you're excited about Saga, will you give him a round of applause? <laughs> Amen. Do you smell it yet? Brown sugar. Saga, I am going to miss you a lot. You have taught me so many things in cooking, the Bible, and I wish you the best, and God bless you. Have fun with your family. Saga, we love you. We're going to miss you a lot. We're going to pray for you on your trip uh -huh, to many places. Saga, I'm going to miss you and love you. I'd love to say more, but it's going to make me cry, so just hurry up and come back home to us as soon as you can. We'll be praying for you while you're gone. Hey Saga, I love you so much, and I know that you say that God is the only one that's awesome, but I think you're pretty awesome too, and I can't wait to see you when you come back for my wedding and be the best man. Love you. Saga, thank you very much for everything you've done for us 
at Story Point and at First Baptist. You're an amazing man of God. You inspire me in the way that you are clearly connected to wanting to know God's will for everything you do. I believe that for your future, God is gonna do amazing things in India or wherever you are in the world because you are a man who is striving for, to be more like God's heart, God's hands, God's feet on earth. Thank you for everything. We love you, good luck. Hey Saga, um, thank you for everything. You've been a blessing to our family and we're gonna miss you and just thank you for everything. Hey Saga, it's Tom. Um, thanks for seeking me out and being my friend. God bless. Saga, you and I came to work at a church at the same time, so I've only known this church community with you being a part, and I can't even imagine what it's going to be like you not being here. We have so appreciated everything, and I've so appreciated. You just helped my beginning year to be so much easier. And when I think of the community that you have been a part of here and what you have added, I'm just so blessed to have seen you in your ministry. There were so many times in staff meeting when you would you would talk about a person and, and how you knew them and prayed with them. And I was like, I don't even know their name. You just have a way of being able to minister to people, to get to know them on a deep level and be able to see them just be transformed spiritually. And I know we're supposed to be the ones commissioning you to India, but I feel like in so many ways you are commissioning us to Gulf Breeze because we need to also invade people's lives with the gospel of Christ just the way you invaded lives here and to know people and to love them on a deeper level. So I just want to say thank you for your example. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for showing us um, a pastor's heart as you have done this year and you will be so greatly missed. And, and I won't know what to do in staff meeting without you because you're the one who you and I end up laughing at everybody else. So who am I going to laugh with now? I don't know. But I just thank you so much and we look forward to hearing what God is going to do in and through you. And please pray for us of what God will do in and through us here as we complete some of the work that you have started. Thank you. Saga, before you leave, the Lord gave me this dream for you. Will accomplish his God in Jesus' name, amen. Bye, Saga. I love Saga and I love how he loves Jesus. I love how he's sarcastic all the time and I love how he just cares about people and how he puts people before himself. And um, just, I'm gonna miss him like crazy and just, I hope we keep in touch. And I just love how intertwined he is with the Word of God and just how intertwined he is with Jesus. And I'm gonna miss you, Saga. I love you. Hey, Saga. I uh, just want to say, if it weren't for you, my husband's wardrobe would not have changed and I wouldn't have had to drop a lot of money to buy new stuff for him. So thanks for inspiring him on his new outfits. You are going to be missed. You've been amazing. Um, you've inspired a lot of people in this church and you've touched a lot of people here. So we love you and we're going to miss you. Stay in touch. Hey, Saga, I'm going to miss you. I really love you, Chaiti. And I will really going to get in touch with you. I love you and I miss you and I'm going to keep in touch. Thank you for the check, please. Hi, Saga. Um, I really enjoyed uh, getting to spend this last year with you, and I'm really going to miss you whenever you leave. Uh, you've been really great um, to have around, and um, I really can't imagine uh, anything here without you. I, I can't believe you were never here. <laughs> um, I love you, and uh, I, I might see you in India. Bye. <laughs> Good morning, little brother. I am so grateful that God brought you here to us at Story Point First Baptist and Mission Casa. Who would have thought you would have ended up in Gulf Breeze, Florida? And who would have thought of the amazing and great impact that you have had on my life as well as everyone who meets you? Your depth of love for God and your ability to draw what you know of God and bring it and give it to us in a way that is life-changing has been so valuable and I again am so grateful that God brought you here. God may be the only one who's awesome but you my brother are awe-inspiring and I love you. Okay Saga, this is my serious face. Um, gonna miss you. Uh, it's been good getting to know you this past year. Uh, we'll miss my Tuesday night um, movie nights and uh, having you over a few times and everything and uh, just gonna miss you around the office and all too so 
uh, blessings. I'm sure we'll see you again, and hopefully that will be in India. So uh, blessings, my friend. Come back and see us. See ya. Ah, un saludo para Sagas de parte de Doris Echeverría. Es un placer haberlo conocido por medio de, de esta iglesia, Misión Casa. Eh, deseándole que su viaje sea muy bendecido, muy próspero y que pronto esté con nosotros. Y lo apreciamos mucho. Es un honor conocerlo. Cuídense. Dios lo bendiga. Hi, Saga. So in our walk with Jesus, we have assets and we have liabilities. You have many assets. Love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. Love thy neighbor as thyself. We'll miss you and we all love you. Your liability? I never really liked chai tea and yours was even worse. So my sweet wife brought the Dunkin' Donuts so we could all choke them down and we'll always remember you from that. We love you, Saga. Hey, Sagar. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for spending time with my family. And thank you for teaching me so much. And I've enjoyed all the time you spent with me. And I love you very much. Bye. Bye, Saga. We're going to miss you. We'll, we'll come visit you in, in Guatemala. Adios, amigos. Saga, it's, it's one of those things to where you... You become friends with somebody so quickly uh, when you first meet them, you, you, you just start, you click and, uh, and you become best friends. And I really think that that is, uh, I think that's what happened uh, with you and I and, and it just, it seems like you and everybody. Um, I, I really appreciate your friendship. I appreciate the jokes. Uh, I appreciate uh, the time, the lunches, and um, more importantly, I appreciate uh, our prayer time together and just you helping me to become a better man on my walk. Um, thank you. Uh, we love you, we'll miss you. Uh, we'll keep up, we'll keep in touch. Love you, buddy. Hi, Saga, I just want you to know that we have loved having you here. We're gonna miss you terribly. Hope that we get to see you again really, really soon. You're a great person, wonderful person, used of God, go with God, do what he says. Hopefully we'll all get to be back together again soon. Love you very much. Um, Saga, um, can we FaceTime you? Hi, Saga. Even though I haven't known you for a really long time, I still love you a lot, and I love how you always have a smile on your face, and you're always making jokes, always making people smile. You always put people's needs in front of yours, and I'm going to miss you like crazy. Have fun in India, and please come back. I love you. Saga, um, it's glad to meet you, and I had a lot of fun with you. Uh, take care out there, and we will miss you a lot. Saga, you know, you're just one of those really special people in life, the kind that other people will never forget once they meet you because of your, your kindness, your grace, your humility. You've taught me personally the meaning of what it means to be a servant, intentionality, pure just love. You don't do what you do for the credit. You do it because you love people, regardless of what they do back. So I am so grateful to be able to have this time with you. Uh, we're gonna miss you a lot. Deep talks and ice cream. This isn't goodbye. See you later. Hey Saga, my brother. I know you're going back to, to your country, but I want you to remember, nosotros te amamos. Te queremos mucho y te vamos a extrañar. We love you, Saga. God bless you. Saga, lots that could be said about you, my friend. Uh, you are a brother. Uh, you are a co-labor in ministry. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to serve with you. And I really look forward to seeing what God is going to do through you uh, in the future. You know, we've had some really good uh, talks. You have, um, you have taught me much. And uh, I, I trust that as God continues to use you, you'll look back on our time together as a church and our time together as a staff and, and, and our time together with me very fondly, I hope, and I hope it'll be something that will bless you and, uh, and, it, and it will be something that will encourage you uh, in the years to come. So God bless you. Uh, this is not really a goodbye. This really is a see you later because we're parting ways location-wise, but we're still together uh, in our hearts and our visions. So God bless you, my friend. All right, Saga, so this is our tribute to you because you have been so influential with us since you've been here. So 
uh, Chad and Pamela Steenbergen, in case anybody cares. Um, so S is for sharing the gospel with us and our friends at our home and sharing your amazing cooking skills, even brain, ugh. Brain. Um, a, always demonstrates God and how you live your life with us through kindness, laughter, and love. Glorifying Jesus by serving us with chai tea. Oh, allowing us to love you with meals, laundry facilities, when your church is broke, and uh, a marathon of Guantanamo. Quantico. Quantico. <laughs> and reminding us to not take life so seriously by being willing to wear a pink flamingo suit or locking your keys in a running vehicle. We love you, Saga. Love you, Saga. The Lord led us to Story Point, and one of the first members I met was Saga. We had him into our home, and it was like the Lord sent me a son. My children are in different places and hadn't seen my boys in a while, and it was just like a gift from heaven. God sent me a son. I'll always be your mom. So you introduced me to the kitchen. We had the Sue and Saga show. We'll never forget how many laughs we had in that kitchen. And that'll draw the smile to your chai tea. I never liked chai tea either. But boy, did we have some smiles with that chai tea. Don't ever forget that's Dunkin' Donut days. I love you, Saga, with all my heart. It's not our plans, but it's God's plans. I'll always be your mama. And just know that we're going to come visit you because I'll always have to be in touch with my son. I love you, Saga. Buena Saga. Este, fue un placer para mí haberlo conocido. Espero que Dios lo llene de mucha bendición, como usted nos ha dejado bendiciones a nosotros también. Y que todo sea un éxito en el nombre de Jesús. Hey Saga, I'm going to miss you so much because you're like the coolest person here. And I hope you have an awesome, safe trip back to India and hopefully you'll come back to visit. I miss you and I love you Saga. So Saga, we haven't had a whole lot of time together, but I am absolutely honored to have met you and be your little white mama while you're here in um, the U.S. I pray that one day I will come over to India and we can do fencing ministry over there. Um, you're marvelous, dear, and I love you with all my heart and I will see you soon. Hi guys, it's me again. I just want to wish you the best over there in India and I hope you keep spreading the Lord uh, God that brought to you and I hope everything goes well and I wish you the best. Have a safe trip and we will miss you here. We hope to see you back again soon. You take care. Saga, I'm really going to open up, spill my feelings. I don't do that often, but I think it's time that I start. I hope that that meant a lot to you. Hi Saga, I just want to thank you for pouring into my daughter's lives, pouring um, the Word of God into their lives, and being a living example of Jesus for them. Um, you've been a living example of Jesus Christ for all of us here at Story Point. We will miss you greatly, and um, I hope God blesses you on your road, and uh, I hope we see you again. We're gonna miss you, Saga. Just want to say thank you. It meant a lot, and you're gonna do good things. Just like to say that it was a blessing to have met Saga, and I wish him nothing but the best in all that he undertakes. Hi, Saga. Um, I haven't known you for a long time, but you're one of the best people I've ever known, and um, I hope you have a good time in India, and I hope you come back sometime. All right, and I'd like to tell you two things I admire about you so much, Saga. Um, one of them is how when you pray, um, everyone around you feels like they're in the presence of God. And you really teach us a lot with that. And also how you rarely, if ever, give up a chance to give. We're going to miss you. Hey, Saga, it's your class. It's your class. We're going to miss you, especially the chat team. Love you. Hey, Saga. I really haven't known you for very long, but from what everyone else says about you, what everyone else talks about you, they're like, Saga, they're so excited. And since I've came back, I've just been like, Saga, you're so awesome. And 
you are so funny, but also you love the Lord with all your heart. And thank you for just teaching us about the Lord and showing us what it is to be a godly person. Hey, Saga. Uh, sad to see you go, but next time I see you in India, I won't crack my head open. Well, what can I say about Saga? Well, the main thing is that I have adopted Saga as my son since he's been here. Saga is one of the most loving, caring persons I know. And it's my prayer that God will take him and use him and bless him to God's glory in India. And I want you to know, Saga, that you will always be my son and that I love you. Mom. Saga, thank you so much for coming here. You've been such a blessing to a lot of people, but especially me. And I thank you for your continued prayers and just know you will be in my thoughts and prayers as well. Have a blessed time and may God go with you. Thank you. Hey Saga, um, it's me, your favorite person ever. Um, I just cannot express how much you mean to me, how much you've done for me. The chai tea that you've made for me when I'm sick from going to Baskin Robbins like all the time, every night. Um, I'm really gonna miss you. And I promise I'll come back to India and visit you one day. And I hope you come back too. Saga, I love you so much and thank you again for everything you've done.